All right, so this demo talks about mixing inks and messing with the transparency and opacity of different colors. So we are using Akua inks. Um, Akua inks come in a ton of different colors. These are the colors that I have so far. So I have this kind of sample sheet so you can see what they look like without being mixed with anything. The biggest thing that you are gonna want to change is how light or how dark a color is, so the value. So there are two different ways. You can use two different modifiers, and a modifier is something that you mix with the color to change it. So we have what's called transparent base. Um, it looks like honey, and that makes a ink transparent or see-through. We also have white. So you can mix white with a color to lighten it up, and that keeps it opaque, and opaque is not see-through. So to start, I'm gonna take out a little bit of each modifier. Again, this looks like honey. Usually you wanna kinda of stir it up just so that it hasn't been separated. And I'm only gonna take out a little bit. Remember that you can always add more, but you can never add it back to the jar once you've taken it out. Another thing to make sure when you're getting ink out of these cans is that your ink knife is clean. Sometimes if you run your finger along this edge, there's ink on it. You don't want to contaminate any of these colors because it'll affect what you end up with. So here's my, what my white looks like. It hasn't been contaminated. It's actually just separated, kind of like when peanut butter sits in your pantry for a long time and separates. So it just needs to be stirred up really good. Should look kind of like frosting. So I'm gonna take out a little bit of that as well. Now I'm ready to start adding colors to my modifiers. So I'm gonna be going with just a blue right now and seeing if I can make it a light blue. So blue that I want for my project. So I'm gonna wipe off my ink knife before I dip it into the blue. Just because, again, you don't want to contaminate these jars for other people either. So I've cleaned that off. I also like to wear gloves. Um, you can get kind of messy when you're mixing ink. That's up to you. So I'm going to use this Prussian blue. And the ink cans get kind of messy themselves. It's a really dark blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of that out and put it on my glass. I'm not going to add it directly to my modifiers because I want to control exactly how light or dark my color is. So before I mix it, I'm going to take a tiny bit on my ink knife and do a draw down. So I'm pushing the ink knife hard against the paper and scraping it across. That gives you a pretty decent idea of how dark that color is just by itself. So let's say I want to make it lighter. What I can do is take a little bit at a time and add it to my modifier. You only want to do a little at a time because once it's mixed in there, if it's too dark, you're going to have to add a ton of white to lighten it up. And that can waste ink. You're better off to test it out and if it needs to be darker, add a little bit more until it's the shade that you want it to be. The proper way to mix ink you don't want to sit here and stir it. You're actually scooping it up against the glass and squishing it down. That makes the pigment really combined together so that it's really mixed. You don't want any of these streaks of blue in there. So I'm just going to do that till it's been combined. I'm also trying to kind of contain the area that it's in. I don't need to cover the entire piece of glass. We'll call that good. So I'm going to test it again. I'm going to take a little bit on my ink knife. Push it down. You, want, you don't want a ton of ink left on the paper, so it should be like you're scraping it across the surface. And that lightened it up quite a bit. Let's say it needs to be darker. I'm just going to gradually keep adding a little bit of blue, just a tiny bit, until it's the shade that I want it to be. So let's mix the white. Again, this white makes it opaque, so it's not see-through.
and we can test it again. So you can see it's slightly darker than the lighter shade. So that's using white. You can do the exact same thing with transparent base. Take a little bit of blue and you're mixing it into this honey-like color. So it's going to look quite a bit different and remember that transparent means it's see-through. So even though this ink looks really dark, when I test it on my paper, you're gonna see that it's gonna be pretty light because it's a see-through ink, so it's letting the white of the paper shine through. So I'm gonna mix it the exact same way. You'll also notice it's a little bit looser, so it's a little bit thinner than using white. That's pretty mixed. So I'm gonna take a little bit on my ink knife. Test it out. So that's what it looks like. It's see-through. So even though it looks dark here on the palette, when you pull it down, it's the white of the paper shining through to make it lighter. And just like with the white, I could go through and add a little bit more blue to make it darker until you reach the shade you want. Again, you're only adding a tiny bit at a time because you don't want to make a huge puddle of ink just to be wasted. So that's nice and mixed. So we can test it out again. And it's a little bit darker. So they do have a different look, but both ways work for lightening a color. All right, on top of lightening and darkening a uh, color, you can also mix colors together. So let's say I'm trying to make a blue-green color, a turquoise. Again, I'm gonna make sure my ink knife is nice and clean. You can tell this one is separated a little bit, so you're gonna mix it up. And I usually only take out what's on my ink knife. So I'm just taking out a little bit and putting it next to this blue. And similar to before, I'm going to just take a little bit at a time and add it to my color until it's the shade that I want. And you can do this with any colors if you want to make it more purple. Um, you're just going to start to combine different color combinations until it's the color you're looking for. Add a little more green. And again, I'm just squishing it against the glass. I'm not sitting here and stirring it because that does not work. So we'll call that good. Test it out. And you can see it's starting to slowly change the color, okay? It works the exact same way with the transparent base. You can mix those together and adjust the lightness or darkness again. Something else you need to consider when you are planning your ink and mixing ink is that generally you want to print from lightest to darkest color, so black being the last layer, and you also want to print from transparent to opaque. Remember that transparent is see-through, so it's not going to cover up the layers beneath it. It's going to let the color show through. Opaque covers up ink a little bit better. It might not cover it up 100%, um, but it, it layers differently. So if you look at my sample down here, I've done just a test strip of pure magenta, so I didn't mix it with anything. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like to layer transparent blue and this opaque blue-green on top of it. So if I take some of my transparent and I test it out over this way, you can see that you still see the magenta through the transparent blue. If I take this opaque color, you might still see it a little bit, but it covers it up a lot more, right? So that is why you want to print from transparent to opaque, unless you are planning on letting the colors show through. Um, the opaque is always going to cover up the layer beneath it a lot better. 
The last thing I want to talk about is saving your test sheets. This is just a scratch piece of paper and you might be tempted to just throw it away, um, but it's nice to save because it almost acts as a recipe. So if you ran out of this color halfway through your prints, you can always start to mix some more and test it next to the original to see how close you can get it. You also just kind of want to keep a mental note of which colors you used to mix originally and about how much. I used way more white than I used blue and I only used a tiny bit of green. Starting from there, you can get pretty close to your original test strip. A common problem I see people run into is that they will spend a lot of time mixing their ink and then run out of time to print all of their layers. You can always save ink. Um, let's say you make too much of a color and you might want to save it for later or someone else wants to use that color. There is a way to save it for a different day. So what you're going to do is take some foil. You can also use wax paper and you're going to scoop up your ink and place it in the center of the foil. So I'm going to scoop up as much as I can. And then you're just going to make a little envelope out of the foil. So this creates a kind of airtight spot for the ink so that it's not going to dry. So I usually fold it up kind of like this. And then sometimes I'll even label it. Um, you don't need to tape it or anything because it's folded enough that it's sealed. You can put that in your box, store it somewhere, and then when you're ready to use it, you just need to carefully open it. I also have super cheap foil, so it's a little bit thin, um, so you just have to be a little bit more careful with it. So you're gonna open it up, and then use your ink knife to scrape off as much as you can. So this is a really good way of saving ink for a different day to continue printing or of saving ink that you've made too much of. And then it's ready to use. I usually like to kind of give it one more good mix before I start to roll it out, but the foil preserves it pretty well.